what is the theory of everything? Let's go back to the year 500 BC, roughly. Right, and philosophers in every ancient culture uh, have, ans have asked this, this question. Is there a unified principle, underlying principle, to our universe as we see it, to, the, to our world as we see it? You know, the, the Chinese have thought about it in terms of the I Ching. The Greeks, Democritus, and, and, and all these people have thought about it. You know, then the Indians and the Arabic civilizations have all asked this question. You know, this is probably the most important uh, question in all of philosophy and all of science. And, but I'm going to put a date. So this is around about 500 BC. I'm going to put a precise date. In the year 1687, something happened to human civilization and that made this problem addressable. Okay, so 1687 is a great year. I would put civil human civilization as pre-1687 and post-1687. So I, I, I'm not sure everybody does this, but I, I, I'm a big proponent of this, partially because, you know, I'm a Londoner. And so something happened in London in 1687. So what happened? Well, that was the year that uh, Sir Isaac Newton published his great opus, um, probably not far from Mayfair, in, 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 the, in the first edition of what uh, was now, you know, what, what the, the book is entitled Principia Mathematica Philosophiae Naturalis, The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. That's a grand title, right? In that book, you know, you probably have learned it in, 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 in school, and Newton laid out his laws of motion, the three Newton's laws. He laid out his, new, his um, law of universal gravitation. But you, this all sounds very, you know, technical, right? But I just wanted to appreciate that book is the first attempt and a serious attempt at putting across this idea that nature is understandable, one, that nature has an underlying philosophical unified content, and most importantly, that language must be done through mathematics. Newton invented calculus in order to make that book happen, just to give you an appreciation. So this is very much in, in this great quote that Newton's pre predecessor, one of the giants that he, on whose shoulders he, he, he stood, of course, that's Galileo Galilei, and Galileo had this great quote, which is, uh, you know, mathematics is the language in which God had written the universe. And this 1687 book of the natural philosophy, of the, the, the mathematical principles, is exactly an answer to that. So let's just try to digest what, what did Newton do exactly in this book that makes it so great. Of course, you know, in school you probably had a very dry version of this book. Let's memorize Newton's laws, right? Let, let's see what, 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 ex what is the philosophical and, and social and cultural implication of this book. Well, let's think about this apocryphal story, which probably, probably never happened. This apple fell on Newton's head, right? What Newton realized was that the equations that governed the motion of the apple that struck him on his head is the same as the one that governed or governs the motion of the planets around the sun. And it's two equations. I won't bore you with these equations. Uh, I won't write them down. And, and, and the two equations, I will show some equations in a minute. But those equations are about one line each. And, you know, fresh, freshers in, in first year mathematics course and first year theoretical physics course will learn the derivation right, from these two equations, which is about just, just this long that will give you the trajectories and the motions of all the planets around the sun. Right? At, at that time, we didn't know there was a universe beyond the sun, beyond the solar system. All of Kepler's laws about the motion, the elliptical orbits of the, of the things, can be derived from just two equations using this new language of mathematics that Newton invented, uh, co-invented, I should say, with, 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 with Leibniz. I have to mention Leibniz because I'm the 20 third generation PhD student of Leibniz. So I'm, I come from the other line. But anyhow, this is just to name drop. So Newton co-invented this calculus, this, this new powerful mathematical method, in order to, to say, well, you know, here are two very fundamental equations, but then you can derive 
all of the precise laws of Kepler about the motions of the planets. You know, the, the proportionality of the period with the area, and blah, 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 blah. All that stuff became just corollaries of this derivation. So that's why 1687 is so important. Of course, it, it does much more than this. Right? This is just, just, just the motion of the planets. So this is why when, when Newton, you know, Newton's tomb is not too far from here in Westminster, be beautiful marble tomb. And you know, this, is, this is a man who unified the motions of the planets, the tides, and everything. And this idea is the starting point for the theory of everything. That unified structure must be phrased in the language of mathematics. And that, that's what's so important.